is Anna Alexander and this is Dish About the Dish. Today we are going down to Australia to talk with a new friend of mine, Kim. We're going to be dishing all about Asian cuisine, believe it or not. So let's go. Kim, hi. Thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> hi, Anna. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So please, I have to start off with what is your most memorable meal? You sent me some pictures and now I'm dying to hear the story. Okay, um, so basically I think we're talking mainly about Asian food um, because of my traveling back and forth to Hong Kong because my children live there. So they've been there for seven years now, well my daughter has been. Um, so my most memorable meal, and it wasn't for the meal itself really. Um, the meal was basically probably mediocre, it was, you know, it was okay. But it was, it was the experience. So if you go to Hong Kong, the place to go um, is the Jumbo Floating Restaurant. It is, um, it's just amazing. It's floating on the water, as the, you know, the name says. Um, it's four levels high and it's basically built like an imperial Chinese palace to detail. It's just gorgeous. Um, it's closed now due to the pandemic, of course. Um, hopefully it'll reopen, but it's iconic. It's iconic because um, it's been in movies like the James Bond movie, Jackie Chan movies, um, Queen Elizabeth has been there, Tom Cruise, all the famous sort of people go there, you know, when they're in Hong Kong. Um, yeah, so the meal that we had, um, the very first time we went was at night time and it was just so magical because we had to catch a little boat at night time across the, you know, across the water to get to the restaurant and it was just lit up all these beautiful, beautiful lights and dragons and lanterns. Um, that was more of an intimate meal. So my son-in-law and his father took us, just like a little sort of intimate meal, there's different levels. So the next time I went was with my son who went to Hong Kong, uh, sorry, to Hong Kong, via Hong Kong to Macau to do a, a dance festival. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, they took all the kids out to the Jumbo restaurant, the dance team. And so we went up on a different level. It was huge, big round tables. Um, and they had this special area where all the kids could don um, Chinese, traditional Chinese, not costumes, I guess, um, outfits, traditional Chinese wear and have photos. So it was just such a, a fun night. So we ordered everything like and shared it on this big round table. Um, the bit I remember is the roast duck that they brought out this whole big roast duck <laughs> bright sort of orange in colour, you know, Chinese roasted. Oh. It was gorgeous. I did like that. Um, yeah, it was the experience. I think it was just the experience of being somewhere magical like that. Um, it wasn't so much the food. All I remember is the duck, <laughs> the duck and the rice. <laughs> I remember we kept saying, please, can we have the rice with our main meal? Because for some reason they kept bringing the rice out separate. And we're like, we need, must be a Western thing. We would like some rice, please, with our... <laughs> with our main meal if that's okay but they tended to bring it out in between the main meal which I found interesting so yeah yeah it was the jumbo floating restaurant that was my memorable occasion yeah so what do you like best about the Asian cuisines because I'm very fortunate up mm. in Seattle we do have a strong Vietnamese and Thai Vietnamese. influence up okay. here so mm -hmm. but what do you enjoy about that type the um, Asian cuisine the Asian food mm. okay Okay, my favorite treat when I go to Hong Kong, and my son put me onto these other pork buns. Um, oh, yeah. They are amazing. Have you tasted those? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure yes. you have. Yeah. Um, so the ones that we like, they're more like a donut. -y. The case one is more like a donut taste. It's really, really sweet. Mm -hmm. It's not more like a dim sim. It's more like a soft, doughy donut, and inside is the, the savory mint. And oh, they're to die for. I love those. <laughs> <laughs> They're my treats when I go to Hong Kong. Um, so Asian cuisine, um, I'd like that it's light, I think. You know, lots of vegetables, rice, noodles. I could live on it, absolutely live on it. Um, although in Hong Kong, there's a variety of restaurants. There's a lot of obviously Asian restaurants, but also a lot of really Michelin staff you know, restaurants as well, Western restaurants. So I love the combination. You can just go there and eat your way through every day, really. Excellent. So you yeah, are yeah. down in Australia. Yeah. So what are some of the Australian staples that you have there? Because everybody knows, you know, steaks and, and seafood. 
Yes. Steaks and seafood. But what else are some of those besides Tim Tams? What are, other, <laughs> what are the other <laughs> Australian Tim staples that are down there? <laughs> Okay, staples, as in what we like to eat. Well, we're very lucky because we have so much fresh produce, um, mm -hmm. you know, down to, to, to beef, veggies, seafood, especially in Queensland. If you go up north, barramundi is my favourite um, fish. I had it up in Port Douglas, a place called Port Douglas, which is near Cairns. But I'm not sure if you know of Cairns and the Barrier Reef. We went up there and it just melted in your mouth and they made it with a homemade tarte sauce. So... Yeah, a lot of fresh, a lot of fresh um, meat. What do we like? We do like a barbecue, of course. We like <laughs> sausages on the barbie. <laughs> uh, rissoles. Um, a lot of people, I guess, might be meat and veg sort of people, where you have your, your steak and veg. Um, we've got it. We've got it all, really. Um, yeah, we're just very lucky. We just have a lot of fresh produce that we can really buy anything but my favorite is the the fresh fish the barramundi that's my absolute favorite we don't get barramundi out here in yeah up here it's salmon uh oh trout, salmon. i love salmon yeah trout salmon trout salmon <laughs> <laughs> well salmon is one of my favorites i eat yeah. salmon all the time but my husband doesn't like fish so much so it's just me <laughs> Yeah, but I make salmon with the salsa, you know, like avocado, avocado, tomato, onion. I'm trying to think what else I put in there. Uh, a bit of lemon juice, I think. Yeah, that's beautiful on, on that the top. That sounds delicious. Mm, mm. So one of the things I've noticed about you also very recently is that you participated yeah. in the melanoma walk for okay. I can't so explain more about that okay um i didn't actually participate in it um this year that was two years well I, I usually do every year i participate um but due to covid they can't physically do that with so many vulnerable people with it <laughs> so um yeah but every year i do because about 13 14 years ago i was diagnosed with melanoma so it's very close to my heart um a bit of a long story but yeah I'm okay so but my auntie when I was younger she actually passed away from melanoma and she left behind three small children so it's really really close to my heart and I'm really passionate about just getting in there trying to raise the funds to find the cure I mean there's so many charities I know but it's, it's good to have one that is really close to your heart to try to raise that money and, and do something positive and hopefully find a cure so yeah that's why I participate in that so maybe next year they'll have it again. But I thought I that would be. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Our friend um, has MS, multiple sclerosis, and their walk yeah. got canceled also. But they're still doing fundraising um, remotely. So yeah. we'll definitely post the link if it's still oh. available down in our description here. So oh, yeah. hopefully people can still can still find a way to contribute, even though we can't physically do those five k runs and yeah. such. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> No, I it's the same. <laughs> you don't run. No, I walk now. I can't run anymore. But, um, <laughs> but um, there, there is a link actually to the melanoma. I know that you guys are in the US, but, but yeah, we are fundraising online. You can purchase a digital footprint, um, which is thirty Australian dollars, and that goes towards the melanoma um, foundation. So yeah, we're still raising money, but we're just not getting out there physically. So excellent. But excellent. Yeah. So what is some an American type dish that you wish you could try at some point? Oh my goodness, I have been to the US. So okay. I've been yeah, I've been to Florida, New York. I've been I've been on a cruise from Miami, which went around Bahamas. So I have tried some food. So what oh, was one of something that that you took away from like going, yes, this is great? I love the Mexican food. I absolutely <laughs> adore the Mexican food. When we went, to, I went to Key West and we went to this Mexican outdoor restaurant. That's the one that sticks in my mind. And I love spicy food. I've got a bit of Indian in my background. And um, and the guy said to me, oh, would you like the jalapeno? <laughs> <laughs> I call them jalapenos. I know it's not correct. <laughs> and I said, oh, yes, bring it on. Put them on the top. Oh, my God. They were um, fresh jalapenos. Mm -hmm. I've never had fresh ones, just the ones out of the, <laughs> the tin. <laughs> I was on fire. I was literally on fire. But it was the most delicious meal I'd had. And we're sitting outside in the sun and the, the breeze. It, it was beautiful. Yeah, so Mexican. I love all the uh, it's the enchiladas and the, the Mexican pancakes for breakfast. And they're, you know, filled with all the yummy stuff. Right. So are you a writer or are you an artist? Because how did you get on that superhero 
Okay, okay. Um, it all started with COVID. All started okay. with COVID. Um, my work went into furlough um, because obviously going door to door and <laughs> mm. it wasn't, you couldn't do it. Um, and then when my work finally did go back, I just decided, because I got into writing. I got into writing and into my art, um, long story. But anyway, um, rekindled my passion and somebody kicked me in the butt and made me say, go on, start writing then if you want to write. So I'm sort of following this path now and loving it. I haven't published yet, but I'm in the process of writing a poetry anthology and a book. <laughs> It's a lot harder than what you think, isn't it? There's a lot of editing and um Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it's <laughs> tough. I've been working on the same book for like two years. Oh, and good. it's like good. I'm so glad to hear that. No. Well, I used <laughs> to be good. able to do two to three books per year. And oh, then I mean, it's like good. I'm so glad to hear that. No. Well, I used <laughs> to good. be able to do two to three books per year. And oh, then wow. okay. last last year happened tons of my year was taken before COVID. And so yeah. just that you go to write and you're like, this sucks. Who cares? Who yeah. cares about these people? Who's gonna whatever? And yeah. so you just get tied up with everything else. So it's this this last book is slow. Like if I can get a hundred words a day bonus. Um <laughs> Yeah. But you know what? I'm so thankful that you're honest with that with me because sometimes it's it's a bit daunting you go on these pages and the author's like oh I'm doing like blah 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 this many words a day I'm doing three books a week or whatever and I'm like oh dear that's not me no <laughs> it's not happening and especially for your first book I've written 17 books and I've written them 17 different ways you will 17. find okay. yeah, you, your process will change and grow and change and you'll learn different things and okay. change and grow oh, what genre of books do you write um, well, I guess, I don't know. I'm just struggling with this genre thing. I guess it's just general. I guess it's general fiction. Um, it's just about, it's a young Australian girl who grows up in the outback, grows up, um, goes on a journey to London. Um, it's basically uncovering family secrets sort of thing. So I think it's just really general fiction. It's not set, set historically or anything. So I gather that would be general fiction or women's yeah. fiction maybe. A um, bit of romance in there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, because I write romance, I'm very involved mm -hmm. with Romance Writers of America, right. and I know that there's an Australian writers, romance yeah. writers. I always want to say Australian romance writers of America. <laughs> no, just there's an Australian romance writers group. Great. Um, okay. So I don't know if you have to write specifically romance or not, but, but if sure. they're okay. like, if they're like RWA up here, they will have fantastic, fantastic resources from oh. craft. Anywhere from starting with craft to the mm -hmm. business side, published, not published. So just Google them and they may have I local might, resources. I will do that. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, because it's, it's all daunting, isn't it, the very first time? I'll have to, uh, you'll have to tell, oh, where's all your books? You have a website with all the books that you've oh, yeah. written. Yeah, yeah. I'll go on yeah. there and have a look. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's uh, yeah. alexander.com is where it okay. is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. I'll um, check it out. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's, uh, I think my very first meeting in that group was the business of writing and it blew kind of my hair back going, oh my gosh, all these things I have to think about. But it was really good kicking the pants as, you know, what type of a writer do I want to be? Do I want to write for myself or mm -hmm. for money? And, and so it helped me kind of solid, kind of clarify and also be a little bit more realistic about the journey. Realistic about it. Yeah. yeah I think no, if I you're writing for yourself, hey, I mean, I think you ultimately you have to do it for yourself. Yes. You have to have that passion. Otherwise, you're just going to be discouraged, yeah. I think. So anyway, but you've done it. You've published. So so good for you. Yeah. yeah. And then you're going, great. So Where's nice the next one? You're like, so hard. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today and for sharing your stories. Thank you for having me. It's nice to have a chat with you and to meet you. I want to again thank Kim for joining us today. Her Instagram link is down in the description below, as well as the link to the Melanoma March that happened down in Brisbane, Australia. Or please donate to any other local marches or 5K runs that usually happen this time of year but have not been able to because of the pandemic. Uh, they all there's many many charities in need this time and any any amount i'm sure they're more than grateful for so if you've been to any of the places kim had talked about also please leave a comment below i would love to hear about your experiences there if you had fun with us as well give us a little like 
hit subscribe because we would love to see you again in the future. But until then, next time, y'all.